Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'm really delighted to be joined today by Nancy Doyle Hall, and we're going to talk about um, her first year as a trustee. Um, so, welcome, Nancy. Um, so thrilled that you could join us. Um, and I just wanted to have a just a little chat about your experiences as a trustee. Um, and first of all, just to set the scene, um, is this your first experience of trusteeship? No, it's not. I um I was a trustee for the first time probably about oh gosh, 10 years ago maybe, um, when I became a trustee for, for VON, um, the Voluntary Organisation Network Northeast. And um, I was trustee there for probably about four years and then became their vice chair, had a very short spell in the chair when they were recruiting for their new permanent chair and then went back to being vice chair. So um, VON was my first experience, but this is my, my second experience of being a trustee. Brilliant. And um, why were you seeking a new role? Um, I run a, a charity. And so day in, day out, I see the importance of having a really good board of trustees. And by really good, I don't mean kind of the most experienced trustees. I mean, people who bring different skills to the table, different outlooks on life to the table, and who make themselves available to, to the charity as a sounding board but also to provide that really important governance um, and so I think because I see that day in day out I it was something that I wanted to make sure that I carved out the time in my life to to do and to give time to um, and my role with Bon had finished a couple of years ago and I'd just been focused really on my day job and I got to a point where I felt like no, I've got the, the capacity now to take on something additional and um, to give some of my spare time to. And so started to look for a trusteeship. And as, I think as well as having that um, experience of the importance of, of trusteeships, I also wanted a new way to connect with um, the place in which I live, Newcastle. And so um, when I started thinking about trusteeships, I knew that I didn't want a national organisation um, and that if possible, I wanted something that was really connected to the city of Newcastle place um, and that was on my doorstep and would give me a, a role, not just on the trustee board, but a, a kind of a bigger connection to, to the city. Yep. And so on that point, um, can you tell us a little bit about your current role um, and why it appealed to you? Yeah, so I became a trustee of the Common Room of the Great North, and I have to confess um, that I had never heard of it before <laughs> Before I looked at the pack. I had actually um, heard of the work that they were involved with because they um, are a fairly new charity that took on uh, the Miners Institute and are creating this incredible um, venue for the city there in that building. So I'd been in the Mining Institute, I'd had um, kind of meetings and conferences in there, been to um, exhibitions in there at various points, um, but the common room was, was new to me and um, the thing that really appealed was, like I said before, it is such a icon in, in Newcastle, you know, that building and the heritage behind it. Um, is something that we all should be incredibly proud of and should know about. Um, and I, I think when I'd been in the Mining Institute previously, I'd been hit by that, but also um, struck by how um, not many people go in. You know, there's this incredible uh, piece of our history that we don't easily connect with. Yeah. And so what appealed to me about the Common Room was that it felt like they were opening up something of the heritage of the northeast um, for a, a new audience um, yeah. a, a, an audience of all generations and um, visitors to the city and residents of the city um, and and helping us to connect with our heritage and what it can mean for our future um, and so I loved what they were doing I loved that it was really connected to Newcastle um, and also I thought this is a trusteeship that I'll be able to contribute stuff to but also learn a lot from I've, I've never worked in heritage I, I know nothing really about mining um, or engineering it's not my field um, 
they've got some incredible archives I've never worked in you know archiving um, and I thought actually there's loads here that I will gain as well as give and so that for me felt like the the, the win-win yeah, and that's sort of the privilege, isn't it, and the opportunity within trusteeship to really learn something new or gain a new perspective on an organisation or part of the community, um, which leads nicely into the, my next question, really. Um, one year on in this role, um, what do you think has been your biggest learning experience um, or your proudest moment as a trustee? That's a great question. I think um, my honest, my kind of gut answer, my honest answer is, wow, it's been a year. Um, I think tr your first year as a trustee really flies past. And I think particularly because of lockdown as well, there's not been the opportunities that would have otherwise been to sit around a table with the trustees and go to the common room and um, participate in the ways that you usually would in that yeah. first year. Um, so I think in some ways, my honest answer would be that there, there's loads I still want to do that I haven't had the opportunity yeah. to in the first year because of COVID, because of lockdown, and because in your first year of trusteeship, there's so much you need to learn and absorb and take in. Yes. And it's not like being in a day job where you're there every day. And so that speeding, that that learning happens quite quickly yeah. um, because, because meetings are quarterly, maybe with a, a couple of other meetings in between if need be um, there's kind of big gaps in between the exposure you have to the charity so um firstly i think i'd say the year has gone incredibly quickly yes. and um, there's still loads to learn but in terms of what am i most proud of um i am most proud of the fact that the common room is um on the cusp of opening to the public it's had an incredible refurbishment program done um, it's it's got itself ready to open up to diverse audiences who will come into that building for a range of reasons from you know having a wedding there through to yeah. wanting to dig into the archives and, and learn about mining through to coming to a, a lecture or a, a concert or an event um, and we're ready for that now and I think during you know lockdown was really tough because it put a lot of things on hold it it slowed things down it meant that visitors couldn't come in at the point where they were going to come in um and I think what I'm proud of is that as a charity and as a new charity it's had the resilience to withstand all those delays to um deal with big changes to uh, to what could be expected in, in terms of its finances, in terms of its visitor numbers and so on, um, and is still there, is still ready to launch and is looking absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that's really exciting. And and I guess sort of finally, I'm just interested um, to know, particularly from the perspective of being a new trustee, what do you think is the real strength of somebody new to a board or if someone's considering joining a board, what is it that a new trustee has to offer that somebody more established on the board um, doesn't at this point? What would you say to someone considering becoming a, a trustee for that first time? Um, I think what I would say to them is don't assimilate. You know, it, your biggest strength is that you're new, yeah. that you're coming to it with fresh eyes, that you're bringing your perspective of the world to that role and also looking at everything you're presented with as, as somebody who doesn't have inside knowledge, who's yes. looking at it afresh. Um, and I, I think it's so easy when you're a new trustee to feel like, oh, I want to ask this, but it'd be a stupid question. Yeah. Or I, I, my comment would be this, but nobody else is saying that kind of thing. So I'll say something else instead. Yeah. And actually, your biggest strength is that you see things differently. And, and maybe you're not always right in what you see, yeah. because, you know, if you knew three years of history, you might say something else. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't say it. Yes. Um, and so the thing that I'm trying to do is to... Um, always have the the courage to ask the ask the question yes. even if it might be a stupid question yes um because that's what you most need from trustees particular particularly new trustees because actually it might be the question that needed yes. asking and answering um so yeah my my kind of top tip to a new trustee would be you know go with your gut trust trust your, your instincts trust your 
mind to come up with the right questions and ask those questions. Fantastic. And that's such um, such useful information to hear. And certainly because the reason I really wanted to have the conversation with you today was because you are a really tr experienced trustee, um, but in a new role. And I think that sort of newness and the freshness and your um, enthusiasm for trusteeship, um, I just really wanted to sort of celebrate today. Um, and so I'm really, really grateful um, for your time. Um, so thanks so much. Um, and do um, check out the common room um, so, to see what Nancy's been talking about. Um, and to really sort of gain a new insight uh, into the type of role you could get involved with um, as, a, as a trustee. Um, and yeah, I think the note to end on is that to kind of, to be proud of being new and to, to be courageous and to be inquisitive um, and yeah, just to make sure that you have the most rewarding experience and to make the greatest impact um, on a board because you're a new voice in the room. So thank you so much, Nancy. It's been really interesting um, and yeah, good luck with your, with your next year as a trustee.